There's nothing more disappointing for a gaming content producer than to spend thousands on a rig and find that recording your gameplay footage is still a hassle. If you made a huge investment in a GPU or CPU, especially for recording gameplays, it isn't always the hardware that's the issue, but rather the settings we use in our recording software. So I was recording some footage for my next years later video, and I was having some trouble finding a video that sort of breaks down the newest features of OBS, while at the same time not making it seem like rocket science. Hopefully today I can give you some tips on improving your experience in OBS or in any recording software um, when streaming or recording in general and help you understand what's going on with all of these settings. Firstly, here's a quick tip for your physical setup if you take your streaming and recording more seriously and have a halfway decent PC with a discrete GPU. That is, have you considered purchasing a second monitor? Now I know it may seem like a showy move to have a second monitor in your setup, but in reality, at least from my experience, it's one of the best investments you can make. And it doesn't need to be an expensive, high res, high refresh rate monitor. Just something that lets you keep your OBS settings on one side and your game on the other. With that said, next we can consider what aspects of your recording are most important to you and in a way, what audience are you catering to? Would you rather have a higher resolution in quality and lesser frame rate or lower resolution in in-game quality for greater frame rate? It depends on what games you'll be playing. In a perfect world, we can have both the greatest resolution and frame rate, but I know at least with my machine, recording at 4K 60fps is pushing the limits. Therefore, you may want to make some sacrifices. Decisions like this influence encoder settings, which are the backbone of your recordings. And keep in mind, a large majority of video watchers and gamers are still native to 1080p. Lastly, could you consider recording footage from a console using an inexpensive capture device to connect to your PC or laptop? <laughs> now, I know this is hearsay in the PC Master Race community, but if your PC just can't handle streaming or recording and gaming at the same time, you may want to consider such ways to offload at least one of those processes to another machine. With these factors in mind, let's take a look at some settings we can play with to improve our recordings. So there's just a few settings that are important to us that we'll consider in this video. Resolution, recording format, encoder, and encoding settings. If we open up the settings here and go to video, you'll see that my base rev resolution or the monitor that I'm recording from is 4K, while the output that we'll be recording is 1080p. I've chosen 60 FPS for smooth quality, but now let's select a format. Our options are, and you can't see them because I'm currently recording, but our options are FLV or Flash Video, MP4, MKV, TS, Mu2, which I affectionately call M3U8, and MOV. MP4 is compatible with almost every system, but used, but as OBS warms us, MKV secures our video data in the event of a crash or shutdown, whereas MP4 and MOV does not. I prefer to use MKV, which is what I have selected now, as I appreciate having a cushion I can fall back on in case a gaming session crashes in the middle of recording. Now we'll select an encoder. Again, I can't show you because I, I'm currently recording, but this is where if you are team green, this is where things pay off. The most widely adopted encoder for those with the NVIDIA GPU is the NVENC system, which leverages a dedicated portion of your GPU, especially for video recording. This is the ideal selection for recording, but there's one other setting we'll consider, which is the one I'm using right now, which is X264, which leverages your CPU and on, on a software level, which is therefore more accessible for any gaming rig because any rig has a, at least a CPU. You, you may also use this setting if you have a beast of a CPU and you want to free up the load from your GPU for gaming. Finally, I don't want to bore you guys, so we're just going through these kind of quick. Finally, we'll consider encoder settings, which fortunately we can take a look at. Most sources advise using CQP or CRF. When we select C CRF or CQP as our rate control, there will be a numerical value beneath it that will determine the quality of our recording. Simply put, the greater the value, the lower the quality, and the lower the value, the greater the quality. 
CQP ranges from 0 to 30, while CRF ranges from 0 to 51. The best range for CRF is between 18 and 24, and I find that 18 was a good middle spot. CQP is anything less than 14 is lossless, which means that every ounce of data is collected, which will put a major strain on your PC. And finally, our most complicated components of our stream are the key, the keyframe interval. It's how often a full frame is rendered. And if you guys need an illustration of that, uh, I'll provide a link in the description. Finally, we're left with settings that are a bit more straightforward or how they'll affect our PC. With CPU usage preset, ultra fast being the less strain on our CPU and placebo being the heaviest strain on our CPU while lowering quality. Um, the ultra fast is less quality, placebo is more quality, but it collects all that data, so it would be a lot slower and a lot harder on your CPU. The profile was set to high, which is a high resolution. Um, main and baseline are more for uh, more mundane tasks like Zoom calls. And tune, zero latency is the one I found that works for me. When you're a gamer, you want zero latency, so that's the setting that I apply. Now, it's critical to note that there's a lot of settings because there's a lot of setups out there. I highly recommend that you experiment with these settings in order to find a balance between performance and quality that works for you. This is my settings and I recorded some gameplay of, which I'll show now of, um, a Fortnite, <laughs> escape me there for a second. Playing Fortnite was a fairly smooth experience. I think based on the recordings that I'm showing you now, I could go up a, f a few more. Just to give you an idea of what it means to experiment, say CRF, I might switch back to the NVENC encoder just to see how that works and use CQP, which is a quality control rate control method. But I, and I think because I have a 5950X, I believe that using this more of the CPU is not a problem. Um, the rate control, I may switch to CQP, but I'm happy with CRF. I may increase this uh, numerical value so that it's less strain on the CPU. I'm happy with keyframe interval, CPU usage preset, faster. You could go to ultra fast, which will probably be as smooth as butter, especially with the system that I have. And I'll put the... Uh, in the link in the description of my uh, specs and then the profile i'll leave i'd leave on high and zero latency i will leave is that so primarily just remember that these settings are the most important for the encoder settings are the most important for uh, determining whether or not your stream is smooth uh and also the resolution which we already looked at and but the biggest the biggest thing that will probably you'll see a night and day difference is the common FPS value. Going from 60 FPS to down to like 30 or 25, you will definitely see a difference in the performance of your system. And um, no doubt you'll be able to have an, a more enjoyable, a, 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 a better quality for a lesser frame rate as we talked about before. And also the downscale filter could be changed to bilinear, and, but that would also create some uh, blurry uh, some blurry textures it's probably not what you want I want to thank you also so much for watching this brief little video if you have any questions as to how to set up your OBS settings I'll do some research on what questions you guys have thanks again for watching and Godspeed in return